All right. So I got a little worried when Gagan gave his presentation and said, uh-oh, all my material is going to go. But he actually helped me with a good transition. Because he talked to you about all of those reasons, uh, actually not the reasons, he talked to you about why people don't go ahead and secure their passwords, why they don't implement security. And I could tell you people are lazy, and we are, we're lazy, but there's also another reason. It's because it's really tough. It, security isn't easy. And in fact, the focus of my conversation is the lack of a user experience. Because I think security is all about making things safe, but it's not making things usable. And Uniken is a company focused on making security usable, but I thought I would really share with you sort of some of the things that you may not know uh, about the internet and about security. So I think all of you would say that you would love to interact more with your bank, your doctor, your lawyer, your friends on the internet, and you'd probably buy more things on the internet if it was safe and simple to interact and to connect. But the technology of today actually limits everybody's ability to do this in a safe and s simple manner. And simple is the key, because if it were simple, people would do more of it. Today, I know when I get on the internet, I'm wondering, what's the next thing that I'm going to hear about? Phishing, poodle, heart bleed, malware, man in the middle. How many of you know what poodle or man in the middle really is? Just a quick show of hands. Okay. There you go. All, all the hacking experts. <laughs> right? The rest of us don't know. Or spoofing. Do you know that today, I could impersonate any one of you on the internet very easily? Or better yet, I could impersonate any of the banks that you interact with very easily on the internet. Or I could get in the middle of that conversation between you and your bank, or you and your doctor pretty easily. That's a scary thing. In fact, today, in the last year, there's 80 to 90 million attacks that happen, 400 per minute. Scary. In the industry that we're first focused in, which is financial services, $500 million in financial loss. 10 to 20% of people have had a problem, on average, every 34 seconds. But the biggest thing is, think of the lives that have been disrupted. So that's, to me, is the interesting thing. You know, I haven't been a victim of a financial attack, but I have had my identity in the last two years, taken three times through hacks where my credentials have been stolen. Um, one of my colleagues, James Villarubia, was actually a White House employee. And a week ago, he got this wonderful letter that said, Dear James, we regret to inform you that your life as you know it is over. Because not only has all of your information been compromised, but every piece of the 178 pages that you filled out for your security clearance is now belongs to somebody else. And by the way, so does your fingerprint. You can't replace your fingerprint, can you? So when you think about it, security is more about disruption of lives than anything else. When I think of security and people ask me, people, what's safe? What does safe mean in security? I think of an M1 Abrams tank. You know, it's interesting. It's unique in the military world, and it's the only tank that's never been destroyed by another tank. It's in the top of its class. It's strong. It's big. It tears up roads. It's complicated to use. And by the way, it's a miserable experience if you've ever been inside one. That's cybersecurity. That's really good cybersecurity. Not designed for the user, but designed to be safe and not to be destroyed. Then I think of motorbikes like this one. And you might consider this to be the opposite of a tank. It's fast, it's nimble, but it's definitely not safe. Now, if you look at security products today, you see two big things. They're either an M1 tank or they're a motorbike. SSL and VPN, the things that are most common and easily implemented in security are those two things. SSL, the digital certificates that tell you that the other person on the end of that website is safe, that's what we use. And a VPN is a private network, hopefully to hide your credentials. Well, let me tell you, Google found out recently that SSL doesn't mean a lot because somebody faked that they were Google on the internet. You know, even Google can be faked. So when you think about it, 
we have an interesting world we live in. We're either clunky and tough to use, or we're nimble and unsafe. The internet has to look at, and security companies have to look at the fact that our user community is not one-dimensional. It's multi-generational. Today, you have a child who's on their iPad, maybe learning the alphabet, maybe playing you know, a game like my three kids do. Or you have everybody in between to the grandparents who are on the internet. Security has to be designed with all of these people in mind. And it has to be something that becomes intuitive for us, but more importantly, maybe it just becomes in the background. You know, and I would say that that's the next big challenge in security, is how do you make security a non-event? How do you make it happen in the background so all of us feel comfortable using it? I want to play a humorous video for you, which I think kind of highlights the problem of today and how we've designed security. I might have lost the music, but... This is a young girl trying to get in and entering a new password. So how many of you have actually gone through something similar to this? This is hard. It's not easy. But this is what we're asked to do. Or even worse, you know, we're asked to do other things. Why? So what do you guys think Star Wars has in common with cybersecurity? Anybody want to guess? Nobody. Star Wars was released in 1977. Do you know that that's when the internet security infrastructure of today was designed in 1977, before the internet as we know it existed. It's also the same year the Commodore computer was introduced and Apple became incorporated as a company. So we're dealing with really antiquated legacy infrastructure that's the core of the problem. Today, you know, if you think about it, this is Mac Lovin's ID card. Uh, for those of you movie aficionados. It actually looks pretty accurate. It looks real. But guess what not? Guess what? He faked this. These identities are easy to fake in real life. They're even easier to fake in the digital world. And in fact, you can even fake being a secret agent if you want. It's not that hard. When these two want to interact today, they interact by checking each other's credentials. How do you do that? Well, today we say, hey, let's create something called an encrypted channel. We hope it's safe. And we compare each other's identities. But we really don't know who the other person on the other end is because those identities are easy to fake. You would say, you know, why do I care about this stuff? Well, it's because that tunnel is what we rely on today for security. That's, that's what all of us have to rely on, is a secure tunnel whether it's an encrypted channel like HTTPS, it's a VPN, it's something else. And we know that that's inherently an issue as well because we can't verify those two identities. So what do we do? How many of you have a token in your bag? How many of you had three tokens? So we've invented something called a token which says, hey, we have really bad absolute identities. 
And so let's just make it more unpleasant and make you use a token to further prove who you are. It's a second digital credential, if you will. So I'll give you a confession. I have a digital token for a bank account that I've had for seven years. I've never logged into that bank account. Do you know why? Because I don't know where my token is. <laughs> and when I went to get a new one, they said, oh, we'll get it to you in three weeks. And they got me a new one. And I opened it, and I put it in my pocket, and I took it out somewhere, and I have no idea where it is. So this is the issue of how do you make things easy? So what if we went back 3,000 years in time and did something really simple? 3,000 years ago, whether you were in Arabia, India, China, when you wanted to get do business with somebody, you tore a note in half, and you each had it. Nobody else knew about that business relationship other than you and that other individual. And every time you came together, that note had to fit perfectly, and you had things to compare against. It was very difficult to counterfeit that. And every time you came together, those pieces actually changed a little because that note wore over time. But you still knew those were two pieces. What if you could do that? What would the experience be like? What if you could do something like this? Oops, I have to play a video. One more. So what if you could just simply click a button? It did one, two, three, four. And when you got to this point, all of those tokens disappeared. Everything else disappeared. You never had to worry about changing a password. You never had to worry about remembering a token. You never had to worry about anything else. And then you enter your password, which, by the way, never needs to change because it means nothing in the new world. Passwords become irrelevant, and voila, you're into your bank account. You're into your medical file. And you know that you can do this with perfect secrecy, that it's very difficult for somebody to take that identity. That's a user experience. And I think that's the way of the future. It's not going to be adding layers and layers and layers of security, but it's going to be making security usable in the next 20, 30 years, hopefully even more simpler than this. Great user experience actually leads to increased security. And we believe the way to do that is through distributed digital trust. Let's forget about relying on third parties. It's hard enough to manage security when two people are involved, let alone a third person that maintains all of your credentials, all of your things. So one of the things that I thought I'd really share with you is sort of, we've heard a lot of horror stories all day today. We've said you should be concerned, and I agree with you. And I would say that that concern stems not only from making sure you take responsibility for your security, but for you to encourage every business that you do uh, interact with, to ask them about their security, to ask them, you know, how do you safeguard my privacy? How do you safeguard my information? How do you safeguard my money or my health data? You know, nobody can guarantee security, but it's time to be more active, and it's time to encourage those people that you do business with to actually make it easier for you. You know, accept the responsibility, but I think us as a business community need to accept the responsibility of, of having it to be seamless and integrated into what we do and not separate from what we do. So I thought I would just end on that note. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, learned something interesting about what Star Wars and Apple has in common with, uh, with security. So thank you. <laughs>